Essex Piano Trio, and they have a great program, Sounds of Vienna, and I think you'll enjoy it very much. So it's Ashley Offer on the violin, David Cabral, cello, and Beverly Soul on piano. So here they are.
share a little bit about the music as we as we go on. So we've divided our little conversation this evening into three parts. There's sort of the appetizer salad part. I'm not sure which part you just had, but there's a little bit more of that to come. And then there's the big Schubert middle course, and it's a big one, but I think you'll love it. It's beautiful music. And then a tiny little dessert. Okay, so you know when you get to do the Schubert, it's going to be just a little one. So that's the structure of the evening. Uh, we wanted to share with you music of the early composers of Vienna, the classicists, Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, the big ones, and then share how that builds into Schubert, who is the next generation, and the piece that we're going to play for you is a magnificent work. Uh, but we wanted it also to be relevant to now, so then and now. So what we've done with our Mozart that we just played, we're pairing another little piece with it that was written um, as a lament for a friend lost to the composer. And the composer was a violinist who played a great deal of Mozart. So Mr. Peart took a small part of a Mozart sonata, a small movement. I'm going to play just a fragment of it because you need to know that before we start. sonata to many of you, a piano sonata, very pretty movement. So Mr. Peart took this movement 
and ripped it apart, essentially. He's going to share little fragments of it, adding the violoncello for some of it, giving it back to me. But he's added to that some dissonance, some, some things that may make you cringe a little occasionally. That's just the note that goes from E to F. But put with it, it's a little stark, isn't it? And if you get it. At different places on the piano or with the violin, it has a little add. So we'll see what you think about it. But this is the pairing with the piece that came earlier. Mr. Arvo Perrett.
a, a lovely lament and gave us a chance, I think, to lament Mozart, who, if we were going chronologically in our program, had died just a few years before the piece that we're about to play for you. So he was the first of the famous classicists to die, very young, 35, I think, um, much too young. <laughs> but then Haydn, the revered master, is still alive and lives on past just about everybody, it seems. Uh, but Beethoven, the young whippersnapper who's crude and you know outrageous, has come on the scene in Vienna. He's about to play his first three piano trios. First three piano trios, the first opus, that's crazy, uh, in one sitting for the master Haydn, who is in, in attendance. And the, the wonderful thing about the movement we've decided to play for you tonight is it, Beethoven is so happy. Beethoven didn't have a very nice life, if you know any stories about him, but he was happy at this point. He was on the cusp of wonderful things happening. And so this movement just rollicks and is so joyful. My guys call it the chicken, and you'll <laughs> see from that opening uh, motive you can decide what it is. Uh, but Maestro Haydn liked it, and perhaps because we think that it was stolen a little bit from a Haydn piece we'll play for you later. So there, that's the secret. <laughs>
fun, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I even know why it's called the chicken. <laughs> yeah. It's like a very busy chicken for the piano, I can tell you. <laughs> it's a handful. Um, so, we're now at the main course part of our evening. Schubert um, was the younger successor to Beethoven, let's say. He greatly admired Beethoven, uh, so much so that he asked to be a pallbearer at Beethoven's funeral, and he asked, asked also that his father arrange for him to be buried beside Beethoven when he died, and he was. Sadly, only a year after Beethoven, and Schubert was very young, had been ill for quite, a, quite some time. So the amazing thing is that this piece, which we think is modeled probably on Beethoven's Opus 97 Archduke, Schubert's Opus 99, uh, this B-flat trio, uh, has the same structure, the same kind of format. But the astonishing thing about both of these late life pieces for these two composers is their joy and their exuberance. And I think this piece is one of the most beautiful that we've ever played. Um, it's just exquisite. It's, it's long, it's about 40 minutes, so plan to just sit there and have a good time. Um, but it's a fairly serious first movement, a gorgeous, gorgeous slow movement that mostly is these guys. They get the duet for that. Uh, and then a silly little scherzo. Scherzi are called joke sometimes, and I think it's the composer's joke on the performers because they always sound so easy and they're always just filled with nasty little tricks. <laughs> so, and they're almost universally that way. So this one is no exception, but it's short. And then there's a funky little theme at the end, the last movement, that just rollicks along so happily. And who would ever think that the composer is going to be dead within a few moments? within a few months. <laughs> he just was writing this joyful, joyful music. So we hope that you'll share our love for it as we play it. Thank you.
glad you liked that one. We love it too. It's, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's sweaty. <laughs> that kind of work. <laughs> but thank you. Thanks for sticking with us and for obviously enjoying it. Appreciate that. Well, you are, would you like to just stand up and stretch for a second? We only have seven minutes of music left, but you can still stretch while I talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Feel better? Okay, good. You can still stay standing if you'd like while I talk. So, back to the then and now stuff. We're going to do now. Uh, William Bochum is one of ours, an American composer who is still alive, who loves trying to meld a little bit of popular and so-called art music, whatever one wants to call it, closer together. So you hear a little of that in his music at all times. He's also, I've met him, a very funny man, just delightful to, to be around and to talk with. Uh, and some of that humor shows up in his music, as it does in this piece. Uh, he wrote in 2009 a piece in tribute to the anniversary of 200 years after Haydn died. Did you get that? <laughs> uh, so he's wanting to honor the old master and Haydn is the person with the surprise symphony, the one who liked to put little, little interesting moments in his music. So, Bolton does that too. So his little Haydn go see, of which we're going to play just the introduction, has a lot of very pregnant pauses, strange modulations. I don't think I have a single chord that doesn't have an accidental one. And yet it sounds very normal. Uh, but it's, it's a tribute to the drama that you hear sometimes in Haydn's works of that sort. But Mr. Bolcom wrote an introduction and a rondo. We're not going to play the rondo. Play a little, continue the little joke. We're going to play as the rondo, the Haydn Gypsy Rondo. The most famous movement perhaps from his piano trios. Uh, and it may remind you a little of our chicken Beethoven earlier. Uh, but we'll, we're going to play those as one piece, page, turning, page turns allowing uh, between. Um, but the Volcom introduction to the Haydn uh, Gypsy Rondo, and we think that probably both composers across the years would have thought that was fun. <laughs> and thank you. You are a fantastic audience. We have loved playing for you and are looking forward to sharing this last group. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. 